Hello there. Welcome to my cooking class, guys. I don't know what your weather's like where you are, but I'm going to tell you, we've got snow about a month before we normally do, and I am freezing. In fact, I came home yesterday and had to shovel. My hands are frozen, and I'm just thinking, I need to, I need to warm up. So today's cooking class, I am going to show you the versatility of our mullein spice. As you know, um, mullein spice can be a beverage. Uh, last week, I made something with it as well. Hey, hi. Uh, but today, I'm going to make a soup with it. Hi, Miley. And um, the soup today is a butternut squash. Now, I'm sure that you've been going to the grocery store and you've been getting sticker shock, right? The grocery store is so expensive these days. But by purchasing the right ingredients and purchasing things on sale, cooking from home can save you a ton of money and you can make your dollars go very, very far. Butternut squash is what I'm making today. And any of the squashes that you get, they have, they're really shelf stable. In fact, Butternut squash is good for about three months or longer if you just keep them in a cooler place, not the fridge, but maybe find a, an area in your home that's not as hot. And some of these um, squashes can actually be good for like months, like five or six months. They're very economical. So let's get started with the cooking class today. Um, to make this, this is going to be uh, one with bacon in it. Now, if you are a vegetarian, not to worry, you're going to get the same kind of flavor, but what you're going to do is you're going to use our better than bacon seasoning. This is actually, uh, just so you know, it's imitation bacon, but it's pinto beans that are flavored to taste like bacon. There's no pork in this whatsoever. Okay, so better than bacon, you'll love it. Anyway, so what I'm going to do to start out, I've got about three strips of bacon here. I've just cut them up. And when you buy our multi-purpose uh, steamer, it actually comes with the tray. What I love about that is all the fat renderings are going to drip to the bottom. And you can drain it or you can keep it. I'm going to keep it today. And uh, you are going to be able to have your crispy bacon. So put the lid on it, the tray, the, the bacon, and throw it in your microwave for the amount that I'm cooking, about six minutes. Every microwave is a little bit different. So let me just throw that in. I do have a TV version, so give me a second. Okay, so um, while that is in the microwave, we need to peel our vegetables. And I can see that I do not have my knife in front of me. Oh, here it is. Our ceramic knife, I absolutely love. Of course, it comes with a sheath to protect the blade because it's very sharp. And of course, because it's ceramic, it uh, could break if you're not going to take care of it. And um, what I've done already with this, and I want to show you this Y peeler. This Y peeler is so slick. Um, I've already peeled some of the items, just because you guys don't need to watch me peel. But look at how easy this is. It's effortless. Now, did you guys know that butternut squash, you can actually eat the peel? Yes, you could. And in fact, natives uh, back in the day, so uh, indigenous people, used to actually eat squash raw. Mm, not so much now, but yes, that was uh, the truth. Okay, so I'm just going to chop this up so you can see how easy it is with the ceramic knife. And I do wanna let you know when you're buying your squash, some tips on how to purchase them. Number one, make sure they don't have blemishes in them. The other thing, when I'm buying butternut squash in particular, I don't know if you saw, saw the shape of that, but my butternut squash, I tend to look for ones that are slim. Why? Because I have less seeds to pick out. When you have butternut squash that are very bulbous at the bottom, it just means that there's more seeds inside there, and I hate taking the seeds out. 
So just a thought, you know, pick your, pick your squash according to what you like. And uh, like I said, I like mine so that I'm not having all those seeds that I have to pick out. When you're picking out seeds, a couple things that you can do is you can also um, use, if you can find one at your local grocery supply, is a grapefruit knife. I love those because they're serrated at the end. Do any of you guys have serrated spoons? I'm not sure. Do you know what I'm talking about? So I do like the serrated spoons. Okay, so I've got butternut squash I'm cooking up there. You're gonna put in um, white or yellow. I don't know, it doesn't look yellow to me. <laughs> but I'm gonna put in onion in there. Um, carrot, okay, and let, here we go, showcasing our amazing carrot. Now, if you want, you don't need to peel your carrots if your carrots are, are fresh. I just like aesthetically looking at them, but because we're actually putting this in a soup, you don't really need to, just make sure you wash it. And we're just gonna put these into chunks as well. This is all getting done while our, our bacon is cooking up. Okay, we can put in some celery. You'll notice I'm using the flexible cutting board. Uh, potatoes, yes, you can certainly use some potatoes in here. And uh, I, you know what, I'm gonna go back and talk to you a little bit about the squash. Remember I said you could actually eat the squash, um, the outside, you don't actually need to peel it. I do wanna let you know, one of the reasons I do wanna peel it is for this soup, I want it to be nice and creamy, right? I don't want to have it fibrous. And I will also let you know that squash is actually very healthy. Here's an interesting fun food fact. Are you guys ready for this? Indigenous people, uh, because squash is so healthy for you, they actually used to bury their um, deceased people with squash. And because it was nutritious, it would help them get on their long journey to the next place that they would be going. So interesting how you learn all these little tips and tricks and facts. Now, what have we got here? An apple. You may want to use a crispy apple or for me, I'm just using any apple I have in my fridge. You know my routine. I don't like throwing out anything. I think this is a gala, but um, one that would be super, super tasty if you're buying in the grocery store is a Granny Smith because it's a little tart and very crispy. I would not be choosing a Macintosh because they just go into mush. So find something that's a little bit more fibrous and crispy. Okay, so we've got our veg, and I know that we don't want to spend endless times in the kitchen, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to steam this. Okay, so let me show you. Here's the bacon. Got nice and crispy. This is going to be put in our soup. We're going to emulsify it here with the blender. And with the remaining juices in here, we are going to just dump our vegetables into the bowl, and we're gonna add some seasoning, okay? So how are we flavoring this? I already told you guys we're gonna use a mulling spice. Now, when you purchase these, they're individually wrapped. They're in a unbleached little package, and I'm literally just gonna rip this open, and I am going to season this right on top. The flavors that we've got in here, if you're wondering why I chose this, is listen to how good this is going to work with uh, what I've got in here. We've got cinnamon. Cinnamon would go fabulous with, of course, our squash. We've got orange peels. We've got cloves, allspice fruit, a star anise, and a little bit of green anise seeds. So it's got some great, great flavors that would just really, um, bring out some really tasty notes in our cooking. So we've got this done. Um, now what I'm, because I wanna save time, I wanna steam it. And remember, when you buy a multi-purpose steamer, there is a difference. These are steam vents, 
we want to make sure that our vents are always away from the handles, okay? And we are going to throw this in the microwave. We want it to just be fork tender. So depending on your microwave, I'm thinking it's going to take about eight minutes. In mine, it might take uh, maybe 10 minutes in yours. It just really depends on what it's like, okay? All right, so we're getting that in. Now, when that comes out, and I want to speed up the process here, what we're going to do is we are going to make sure it's nice and creamy. And the best way to do that is to blend it. Now, there's a couple ways that you can do that. You can use, um, you know, an inversion, you know, the little stick wand. But I have always find when I'm making soup, especially when it's something more fibrous, like the things I'm using today, the carrots, the celery, the squash, that it's easier in a blender. So we're going to steam this and then we're going to, because I wanted to add additional flavor and I'm not going to show you what that looks like right now. But if you wanted to, after you've steamed these, if you wanted to get a nuttier flavor, you may want to consider throwing it on a baking sheet. You can season with a little bit of extra salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of minced garlic, and you're going to bake it in the oven if you want to have that um, more, I, what, what, what do I want to say? Well, it will bring out more flavors. It, it pulls away the moisture, of course, when you're baking it. And so you're going to get a more robust flavor. There's the word I was looking for. All right. So here's our bacon. I am going to now, let's just move some things out of here. I'm going to put this in a food processor is what I'm doing. If you have a food processor or a blender, whichever works for you. But we're going to add all our veggies. And I'm going to add the bacon as well. Give me a second here. And we are going to blend this. Now, in order for it to be soup, because right now all I've got is veggies, is we need to add some moisture in here. And we're going to use, put it in our multi-purpose pot here and cook it up. So what I've got here is our one cup prep bowl. And in here, I've just got a little bit of water and I've added our nourish broth. If you're vegetarian and you don't want to use this, this is actually our chicken broth. So it's chicken flavored, but you could use our vegetable seasoning instead, our vegetable broth, okay? And the instructions are really easy. Basically, it's one and a half teaspoons to a cup of water. Now it says boiling water. Obviously, this isn't boiling because I'm going to be cooking it on the stove anyway. So I'm, and I know you can't see. Let's see if I can turn this a little bit. I'm just going to pour this into my blender. I'm going to use my saute spoon here. And we're going to give that a whirl, okay? Now, the, another reason why you don't want to put hot boiling water in your blender is when you're blending this, if you're putting hot stuff in, have you guys ever had it explode? Hey Cam, nice to see you. Yes, you do not want it to explode. Um, some people, in fact, oh, here's a little tip. I'm gonna grab it if I can. It's always good to have a tea towel handy because you may want to literally put this right on top to make sure that it's not splashing hot product at you. And we're just going to get this nice and smooth. Oh, can you hear me out there? see what we've got going here. Okay, so we basically can see how creamy this is. Now, um, FYI, if you want, and you want something a little bit sweeter, and sometimes kids won't eat things like this, they need it to be a little bit sweeter, you could add coconut milk if you want, okay? Coconut milk, not coconut water. You want coconut milk. Okay, now we're going to put it in our multi-purpose 
pot. This is the 12 cup one. You can actually see the measuring graduations are right in here. And we're gonna heat this, and as you can see, it's very thick. Okay, now I need to turn you guys again. Here we go. It's, it's quite thick, too thick for a soup in my opinion. So we're gonna have to add a little bit more liquid in here. Of course, we've already got the flavor of the nourish broth. We've got the mullein spice. You can throw in some minced garlic, which I'm gonna do right now. And of course, salt and pepper, because everything we basically sell at Epicure is really low sodium. We always think that you can season it yourself so there's not hidden salts and sugars that are making you uh, maybe a little ill at home. There's a napkin, okay. And we're just going to put this on the stove and we're gonna cook it up a little bit. You want to, you probably want medium heat. So let's get some liquid in here. And you're gonna to wanna to grab your spoon and just keep adding until you get the texture that you sort of want to have, okay? The way it was before, it was, it was thick like a stew. Anyway, even adding, I, I probably am gonna say we're gonna add about two cups of water. Of course, I had one cup in here, roughly, or three quarters of a cup, and I've probably added another cup and a bit. And now you can see that it's looking more like a soup. So we're just gonna heat this up, adding some flavor. Always make sure that you check your, your flavors, which is why I have a ton of spoons in my drawer. Taste it before you start adding the flavors. Okay, so what are the seasonings I'm gonna to add today? I'm gonna to add Italian. Why am I doing Italian seasoning? Okay, well, what does it have in it? Garlic, onion, lemon, and herbs. Lemon's going to just give it a little bit more zip. So we're roughly going to put in a teaspoon. This is our four in one spoon. So we're going to just stick this in here. Next, I wanted to have a little bit of garlic. You don't want to overpower it. So I would not recommend you use roasted garlic aioli, but you may want to use our pantry basic. This is our um, minced garlic. And basically this is just a dried garlic clove that's been minced for you. So it's done all the work in advance. And a half a teaspoon is the equivalent to one clove. So I do not want it to overpower this. So I'm gonna flip my spoon upside down and I'm just gonna put probably in a quarter of a teaspoon of our minced garlic. And as I said before, because we really have low sodium, low sugar, I'm gonna add some salt and pepper and I'm just gonna heat this up. Um, the pepper that I'm going to use, or the salt that I'm going to use today is our herb garlic salt. Just going to add just a little bit more flavor to that. And we're just going to stir this up. Now, don't walk away too far because um, I want to let you know this is quite uh, a thick stew already, or soup, I should say. So if you walk away and leave this, I'm going to tell you it's going to burn on the bottom, okay? Which is why we have it at a medium heat and not a high heat. And you're just going to stir this around. Now there's sweetness in here already because I put that apple in, right? Now, with the leftover apple, what you may want to do and how I'm gonna decorate the plate up is I've made a little bit some matchstick apples. To prevent them from browning, you may want to just soak them in a little bit of uh, water with a little bit of lemon juice and then we'll prevent it from going brown. And then I already showcased it, but I'm gonna sprinkle on some better than bacon right on top, all right? So here's a fun food fact. One more thing before we actually plate this, and this is warming up really nice. Let me just taste it another time here, make sure it's got some good flavor. Mm -mm -mm. Oh yes, <laughs> love it. I'm gonna have a great dinner tonight. You can actually freeze this. I froze it before. So let it cool down, put it in little freezer bags, label it, and I flatten them right out and throw them in the freezer. So when you come home from a day and it's just been really cold and you've had crap weather, 
I just pull out one of those little freezer packages and put it in our multi-purpose steamer and steam it up and heat it up again. You're going to love it, I am telling you. Okay, so let's plate this. Love, love, love our ladle. This is part of our kitchen collection. And each scoop will give you about, a, I don't know, almost a half a cup. So we'll just do a little scoop. Of course, I made a mess here. Just grab a napkin. Wipe that off. Okay, so here's how you can plate it because remember, everyone eats with their eyes. Put a little bit of our matchstick apples and grab our bacon bits and I just they, they are quite large so I like just crumpling them up just a little bit and put it on top and there you go guys how easy was that all you need now is a spoon so remember Grab your squash. It is very inexpensive. This is so darn easy. Think out of the box. Remember, mulling spice does not just have to be for drinking, although it is really good. Mulled wine, mulled apple juice, mulled cranberry juice. Uh, you can make desserts with it, like sauteed grapes, for example. And of course, as you've seen today, this is butternut squash with apples and our mulling spice. It is super, super delicious. Yummy, warm you up right from the inside out. So enjoy and remember, the mulling spice is only available in this season. It's a fall, winter item. So at the end of the season, it will be gone. And I've told you before, get make sure you grab a few boxes of this. You've seen some alternate ways to use this. Um, and it's great for sangria in the summer. Honestly, it's like your secret recipe. So thanks for popping in, guys. Nice to see you. I hope you'll come back in again. Bon appetit. And uh, come back again next Thursday. Nice to see you, Sandy. Take care, Melissa. Bye-bye.